तव कथात तप्त जीवन कविपीड़ कलमशापह श्रवण मंगल श्रीमदादत भुवि गृणंत ये भूरीदा जना श्री श्री रामकृष्ण कथात श्रीमकथित द गॉस्पल ऑफ श्री रामकृष्ण रेकॉर्डेड बाय एम महेंद्रनाथ गुप्ता an apostle and disciple of sri ramakrishna the context is sri ramakrishna's meeting with vidya sagar in calcutta kolkata hai sri sri ishwar chandra vidya sagar e songe sri ramakrishna er milan sri ramakrishna's meeting with sri vidya sagar ishwar chandra vidya sagar which was a very great scholar and a man of great heart compassion always doing philanthropy very unselfish so sri ramakrishna had a great liking for him <coughs> now the discussion is very interesting he is discussing the concept of vigyana vigyana is a very new concept that sri ramakrishna has introduced based on his experience of bhava mukha we should know what is bhava mukha very briefly भाव मुखा मुखा इज द थ्रेश होल्ड भाव इज बीइंग देर इज अ थ्रेश होल्ड ऑफ बीइंग एंड बिकमिंग द रिलेटिव एंड द एब्सोल्यूट द इमिनेंट एंड द ट्रांसेंडेंट द फाइनाइट एंड द इन्फिनेट एंड दिस थ्रेश होल्ड इज कॉल्ड द भाव मुखा Sri Ramakrishna, when he had the experience of nirvikal pa samadhi, he was absorbed in for about six months. Then the Divine Mother Kali, Jagadamba, Bhavatarini, commanded him remain in a bhava mukha. Tui bhave thak, tui bhava mukhe thak. He heard it three times. Once. he heard after the nirvikalpa samadhi from within at another time when he was very troubled when hazra taunted him saying that all the forms of gods and goddesses that you see in visions they are all the hallucinations of the mind vedanta says that god is formless beyond all uh, nama roopa name and form and so on Sri Ramakrishna, like a child, became very much perturbed, and while doing puja, he saw that the mother is saying, in the form of near the jar, the pot on which worship is done, the ghata. He says, in the form of Rati's mother. Mother came and said, "Tu ye bhave thak, bhava mukhe thak." On another occasion. he saw in the kuthi body where he was staying at that time in dakshineshwar suddenly from the floor as if smoke was coming out and he saw in the smoke the vision of a divine form with flowing beard He intently looked at Sri Ramakrishna and said, "Tu ye bhave thak, bhava mukhe thak." This form we have heard from very senior elderly swamis is Hiranyagarbha. Hiranyagarbha is the mahat tattva of the sankhya. The word Hiranyagarbha is used in Vedanta, and that is the last point in Dvaita Prapancha. Beyond Hiranyagarbha is the Avyakta or unmanifest. Beyond unmanifest is the Purusha with the supreme conscious entity. Indriye bhya para khyartha arthe bhya jo param mana manasastu para budhi budhi ratma mahan para 
ಮಹತಃ ಪರಂ ಅವ್ಯಕ್ತಂ ಅವ್ಯಕ್ತಾತ್ ಪುರುಷ ಪರ ಪುರುಷಾನ್ನ ಪರಂ ಕಿಂಚಿತ್ ಸಾಕಾಷ್ಠಾ ಸಾ ಪರಾಗತಿ ಕಠೋಪನಿಷದ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ಗ್ರೇಟರ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮನಸ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸಂಕಲ್ಪ ವಿಕಲ್ಪಾತ್ಮಕ ಮನಸ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆಸೋಲೇಟ್ಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಸಂಕಲ್ಪ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿಕಲ್ಪ ದ ಡೂಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಮನ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಟೆಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಹೈಯರ್ ಇಂಟೆಲಿಜೆನ್ಸ್ ಹೈಯರ್ ಇಂಟ್ಯೂಟಿವ್ ಇಂಟೆಲಿಜೆನ್ಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಧಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಗಾಯತ್ರಿ ಮಂತ್ರ ಕಾಲ್ ಮೇಧ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೇಧಾ ಸೂಕ್ತಂ ಆಫ್ ದ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾ ಇನ್ ದ ಯೋಗ ಸೂತ್ರ ರತಂಭರ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾಲೋಕ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೋನ್ ಸೊ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಕಾಸ್ಮಿಕ್ ಇಂಟೆಲಿಜೆನ್ಸ್ ದ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ರೋ ಕಾಸ್ಮಿಕ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ದ ಕಾಸ್ಮಿಕ್ ಇಂಟೆಲಿಜೆನ್ಸ್ which is called the hiranyagarbha kal mahan atma mahadav param avyaktam beyond that is avyakta unmanifest avyaktat purusha paraha the purusha the supreme conscious principle is beyond avyakta purushanna param kinchit sakashtha sa paragati hi beyond the purusha there is nothing so this cosmic intelligence buddhi called hiranyagarbha in vedanta is called mahat in sankhya bhagavan bhashyakara shankaracharya says in the kathopanishad bhashya ಅವ್ಯಕ್ತಾತ್ ಪ್ರಥಮಂ ಜಾತಂ ಹೈರಣ್ಯಗರ್ಭಂ ತತ್ವಂ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವ್ಯಕ್ತ ಅನ್ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಹಿರಣ್ಯಗರ್ಭ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಮಹತ್ ನೌ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾಸ್ಮಿಕ್ ಇಂಟೆಲಿಜೆನ್ಸ್ ದ ಮಹತ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ದ ಬ್ರಿಡ್ಜ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ that which is beyond avyakta and beyond and the relative universe which is below that consisting of the mind manas then uh, ahankara aham tattva then pancha karmendriya pancha gyanendriya pancha mahabhuta and pancha sukshma bhuta this is the sankhyan cosmology and if you go subtler and subtler greater and greater dimensions deeper and deeper dimensions you reach the hiranyagarbha beyond which is the unmanifest and the purusha so the hiranyagarbha is the position where you have a peep into both the other world which is beyond name and form and this world which consists of names and forms that is the door the hiranyagarbha the cosmic mind which swami sharadanand ji calls a virat man in sri sri ramakrishna leela prasanga sri ramakrishna's divine play first translated as sri ramakrishna the great master later retranslated as sri ramakrishna the divine play this is the cosmic mind of the hiranyagarbha which is the threshold so sri ramakrishna went above beyond and beyond crossed all the way the prapancha when totapuri instructed him he was stuck up at the level of the divine mother kali which is the hiranyagarbha stage then he refused to go farther he said i can't go farther i see palpably tangibly the living form of the divine mother so full of compassion and love i can't leave my mother and go beyond it is not a mere emotion that we feel it is a palpable realization of the saguna brahman <clears throat> then totapuri told him 
वही नॉट क्यों नहीं होगा एंग्री काउंटेनेंस ही टुक अ स्मॉल पीस ऑफ ग्लास एंड स्ट्रक एट द प्लेस व्हिच इज इन बिटवीन द आईब्रोस व्हिच इज कॉल्ड द आज्ञा चक्र पियर्सन सेड मेडिटेट ऑन दिस रामकृष्ण माइंड मेडिटेटेड ऑन दैट Again, the form of Kali, when it appeared palpably, he says, "I imagined Jnana, knowledge, divine knowledge, as a sword, and cut the form of the mother into two pieces, and the mind simply merged in the absolute and the infinite." And he was in that state for nearly six months. Later on, initially three days. तो तब इज वंडर स्ट्रक ये क्या दैवी माया है वॉट इज इज वंडरफुल वर्ल्ड बिविचिंग डिफाइन माया दिस बॉय सो क्विकली सो फास्ट ही हेज रिजन टू द स्टेज ऑफ निर्विकल्प विच टुक नियरली मोर देन फोर्टी ईयर्स फॉर तोतापुरी टू अटेन विथ ट्रमेंडस हॉस्टलिटी इज इन तपस्या एंड अनकॉम्प्रोमाइजिंग अनब्रोकन कॉन्टिनेंस ब्रह्मचर्य the state which you attained of several decades of sadhana this boy has attained just 3 days that was the mind of ramakrishna when he was absorbed in the absolute then the divine mother commanded him divine mother is a form of hiranyagarbha saguna brahman she said bhava mukhe thak that means You come after attaining the highest nirvikalpa advaita experience. You come back, not fully to the relative world, but remain at the threshold, at the hiranyagarbha level, which is called the bhava mukha. So that at any time he could merge in the absolute, the nirvikalpa samadhi, and any time he can come down. and mingle with the world with the realization of the supreme brahman intact and never for a moment swerving from that realization this is the bhava mukha and this is also the state of a vigyani many people have a doubt about whether the bhava mukha and the vigyana are the same thing Swami Tapasyanand Ji, who has elaborately written about it, you can see his book on Bhakti Schools of Vedanta. At the end, he discusses Bhava Mukha, and in the life of Sri Ramakrishna, short life, he has a wonderful piece. What is Bhava Mukha? There he says that this Bhava Mukha is the same of the state of Vijnana. Sri so Ramakrishna here, the Vidya Sagar discusses Vijnana. What is Vijnana? Visesha Vijnana. This word is used in the scriptures also. Vijnana Vijnana, Vijnana Vijnana Mastikyam, Vijnana Vijnana Triptatma. In the Bhagavad Gita, for example, the Upanishads also the Vijnana word is used. The Vijnana Maya is used, but Sri Ramakrishna's conception of vigyana his explanation of vigyana is different he says sri ramakrishna a person who does not know god does not believe god exists everywhere is an agyani agyana is ignorance about the supreme reality or god gyana is to know god realize him Vijnana is a special knowledge of God, in which the devotee not only knows Him, but intimately knows Him in all possible aspects, converses with Him, plays with Him, and lives the life of God, absorbed, God-soaked consciousness. at the same time not renouncing this world of name and form and nama roopa is a very interesting uh, uh, experience which is described by sri ramakrishna 
He says, giving an example, a person who does not know there is fire in the wood is an agyani, is an ignorant person. A person who realizes there is fire and can, if needed, light the fire in the wood is a jnani. But a vijnani is one who uses this fuel, the wood, lights the fire, and using that he cooks his food, eats the food, becomes nourished and is happy. <laughs> this is an example which he gives in the Sri Sri Ramakrishna Kathamrata, which what does that mean? Which means he is a person who has intimate knowledge of God in all the various aspects. We get hints of this in the Upanishads in the Bhagavad Gita, but perhaps we would not have realized the deeper significance of these uh, places, of these uh, verses, if we had not been taught by Sri Ramakrishna about Vijnana. For example, in the Kathopanishad there is a verse, Astityevo palabdhavyaha tatvabhavera chobhayo Astityevo palabdhasya tatvabhava prasidati This, the truth has to be realized as asti. Asti is sat. Existence absolute. And also be realized as tatvabhava. Tatva is a very interesting word in Sanskrit. Tat means that. Tva is a pratyaya meaning ness in English. Good, goodness. Bad, badness. Or hood. Neighborhood. Boyhood. It's a pratyaya which means the quality of. Tat, dva, Tva actually literally can be translated, although unintelligibly, thatness. <laughs> what is thatness? It means its absolute real essence as it is. It's called Yatha Bhuta Darshana or Samyak Darshana by Shankara. But it is not merging in the absolute and becoming one with it. But after knowing it as asti, sat, as well as tattva bhava, you know both the aspects and remain on the threshold so that you have access to both. One is the saguna aspect, the other nirguna aspect. One is the savikalpa aspect, the other is the nirvikalpa aspect. With qualities, without qualities. With modifications, without modifications. There is another remarkable verse in the last chapter of the Bhagavad Gita when the Bhagavan Sri Krishna is just wrapping up his teachings, winding up. There he says, Ahankaram balam darpam kamam krodham parigraham vimuchanar mamashanto brahmabhu yaya kalpate. Ahankaram balam darpam egoism balam the strength which is born of the intellect and the body etc. Darpam arrogance kamam lust and desire, krodham, anger, giving up all this, vimucha nirmama shantaha, he gives up his mamata, mamatva, the mindness. So, I and mine are totally renounced. What happens then? Then he becomes Brahma Bhuta, he becomes absorbed in Brahman. 
interestingly, this is not the last stage. Usually, Vedanta says that getting absorbed in a Brahman, remaining as Brahman is the last stage. Esha Brahmi Stiti Partha Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, last verse. This is called Brahmi Stiti, remaining in the state of absorption in Brahman, the supreme reality. But yet, strangely, Bhagavad Gita says, Brahma Bhuyaya Kalpate, then what happens? Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma Nashochati Nakangshati. Having been absorbed in Brahman, he becomes completely tranquil and joyful, pure joy, not of the senses, but the highest level of joy. Samam Sarveshu Bhuteshu Madhubhaktim Labhate Param. Sarveshu Bhuteshu Samam. Your sameness with all beings. He got Samatva Buddhi, same Brahman he says everywhere. Then, where is interesting statement, Madhubhaktim Labhate Param. He gets supreme bhakti, devotion to me, to the Supreme Lord called Parabhakti. <laughs> after absorption in Brahman, after Brahma Jnana, knowledge of Brahman, becoming one with the Brahman, Brahma Veda Brahma Eva Bhavati, Mundaka Upanishad says, a person who has knowledge of Brahman becomes one with Brahman. The oneness with Brahman he realizes. Samasarvesh Bhuteshu becomes, he sees the sameness everywhere. Madhu Bhaktim Labhate Param, he gets supreme devotion, para bhakti. Wait, it's not complete. <laughs> How many dimensions he is describing? Bhaktya Maam Abhijanati. Through this Parabhakti, he knows me. Sri Krishna says, Yavan Yaschasmi Tattvataha. Two interesting phrases are used. Yavan Yaschasmi. Here, once again, the insight with the Bhashyagara Shankara. Yavan Yaschasmi. In my Imminent and transcendental aspects, in my saguna and nirguna aspects, in my finite and infinite aspects, yavan yaschasmi tattvataha. Tattva, as I said, exactly seeing a thing as it is. So tattvataha means in tattva, really and truly, in reality. Yavan yaschaspe tattvataha, then tato maam tattvato jyatva, having known me exactly in reality as I actually am, vishate tadanantaram, last stage of realization, tad anantaram vishate, tad means that, Anantaram thereafter, Vishate, he enters and becomes one. Swami Tapasyananda of revered memory used to say, the Bhagavad Gita does not enter into the controversy of Dvaita, Vishita, Advaita, Advaita and so on. <coughs> whether he becomes one with Brahman, whether he remains separate but eternally connected to Brahman, whether he becomes part of Brahman, Nothing is mentioned. He enters into divine life. He enters into the supreme reality. What does it mean? After having attained the knowledge of Brahman, Brahma Bhutaha, then he gets Parabhakti. Parabhakti, Shuddha Bhakti. 
through this parabhakti you realize the supreme being god as he is in his real nature having known this is exact tatvatah in fact in a sense as it is actually he enters into it this is the state of vigyana he enters into it means he becomes one with it in a sense but he also has the capacity to emerge from it with a transformed transmuted illumined effulgent completely transfigured personality <clears throat> he goes through the whole thing this ocean of satchidananda swims through it goes to the very depths of it then comes out completely transfigured as a divine effulgent being still retaining as it were <coughs> his personality name and form so is he a person with name and form or personality in a sense yes but in another sense no he has no personality of his own he is completely and tangibly saturated with divine consciousness that's why even the body of such a person like sri ramakrishna <coughs> is called chid ghanakaya swami vivekananda uses this phrase with regard to sri ramakrishna in his aratrika him chid ghanakaya <coughs> निरंजन नर रूपधर निर्गुण गुणमय खान भव बंधन जग वंदन वंदी तो मीरंजन नर धार निर्गुण गुण स्वामी विवेकानंद डिस्क्राइब श्री रामकृष्ण एज एज वन हु इज अ विज्ञानी कॉन्स्टेंटली पॉइस्ट एंड भाव मुखा दैट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस एक्स्ट्रॉडनरी हिम द आरत्रिक हिम विच स्वामी विवेकानंद कंपोस्ट Niranjana nara roopa thara he is niranjana beyond anjana beyond not tainted by maya beyond name beyond form ashabdam asparsham roopam abhyayam tatha rasam nityam agandha vachayate anad janantam mahad param dhruvam nichayatan mrutyu mukhat pramuchyate katho parishad he is ashabd asparsha beyond all relativity at the same time nara roopa thara is assumed a human form how is it possible that is the mystery of the divine incarnation remaining in a bhava mukha he does good to the world constantly poised in the state of nirvikalpa the supreme undivided transcendental consciousness is he transcendental yes is he immanent yes is he both yes <laughs> what is he nirguna gunamaya mochana aghadushana jagabhushana chidghana ka chidghana ka ka is body He is not simple human form, although it appears to be so. What is he? 
completely made of chit, supreme consciousness. If the supreme consciousness, divine consciousness, comes in a condensed form, it is Ramakrishna's body. It is just like you take some mud and prepare a beautiful form, image out of it. What is this image? This image is full of mud. Or you make an image of stone, marble, of wood. So it is full of wood only. So the name and form which appears in this wooden image or the marble image or the stone image or the uh, mud image, the Namaruba which appears there is only an appearance. If you take consciousness, chit, and make it into a form and give it a name, so that will be Ramakrishna, Chidghanakaya. Why? Because he is a Vijnani poised in the state of Bhava Mukha. Remaining in the Bhava Mukha, he is going good to the world. Sri Ramakrishna again gives an example just here in Vidyasagar's conversation. Using the process of neti neti, not this, not this, not this, ultimately you go to the Supreme. You ascend, completely merge in the Supreme. Then after reaching there, you realize iti iti, all that I see, all that I rejected as not this at the lower level, appear, reappear as, as it were, as manifestations of the same Supreme Spirit or Consciousness. He gives the example, you want to climb to the roof of a building through the staircase. You say, is this staircase the roof? No. Next staircase? No. So you go on rejecting neti, neti, naiti, nai, this, not this, not this, not this. Ultimately, you reach the roof and say, yes, this is the roof I have reached. That is one kind of realization and you get lost. That is for Brahmagyanis of the ordinary type. But the extraordinary Brahmagyanis, who are called Vigyanis by Sri Ramakrishna, after reaching the roof, they look down and see that the stairs are made of the same material like brick and lime, as the roof itself. The same consciousness is pervading everything. So Ramakrishna gives another example in the Gospel of Ramakrishna. Wax. You know, now it's very common. Wax Museum in London and even in Calcutta we have a wax museum. So many farms are made of wax. What is this farm made of? You have, a, you have an image of so many celebrities. This may appear to have a name and farm, but it's actually wax. So Ramakrishna gives the example. Suppose a garden is made full, made of wax. The plants are wax, the flowers are wax, the entire thing is only wax. Ultimately, if you see through the Nama Rupa, the name and form, it reduces to wax only. Now replace wax by consciousness, whatever we understand of it. So you make all these forms and names out of consciousness. You rejected all this as not real. Nama Rupa is unreal. Jagan Mithya, then climb to Brahman and become absorbed in Brahman. Don't get lost. Come back and see what you rejected as Nama Rupa is also the same Brahman appearing through this Nama and Rupa, name and form. Hmm. Nothing is rejected. So he says, after reaching the roof, you realize it's all made same material. 
it gives a beautiful uh, uh, counter to Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya. And he is introducing a new paradigm, as it were. In the beginning, you say Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya. The world that I see of name and form is it's all Mithya. Mithya is not unreality. Wrongly, unfortunately, in the English language, has been translated as unreal. It is not unreal. What is Mithyatva? What is Mithya? Madhusudana Saraswati, the famous saint scholar, perhaps the last word in Advaita, Advaita Siddhi, is elaborately discussed in the Mithyatva. Mithya is something which is not absolute Sat, nor is it absolute Asat. Nor absolutely real or absolutely unreal. Example, what is the absolute Sat? That which is beyond space, time, causation, name, form. That is Brahman unchangeable. Undecaying. Najayate mriyate va kutaschen ayam bhutva bhavita va nabhuyaha ajo nitya shashvato yam purano nahanyate hanyamane sharire bhagavad gita aja nitya shashvata purana so many adjectives are used in the Upanishads also nanta pragyam na bahi pragyam na upayata pragyam na pragyana ghanam na pragyam na pragyam Adrishtam avyavahar yam magrakyam alakshanam achantyam avyapadeshyam ekatma pratyayasaram prapancho pashamam shantam shivam advaitam chaturtham manyante sa atma sa vigyayaha Manduku Panishad Achantyam avyavahar yam agrakyam alakshanam o o o neti 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 So this is the nature of Brahman. Sa is all the same as Atman, Sa Atma. Turiya, this is the fourth level of existence. It is not a level, but it is your own self, Atman. So you reject everything as not this, not this. It is it is na anta pragyam, na bahu pragyam, na ubhayata pragyam, na pragyanaganam, na pragyam, na apragyam, it is na adrishtam. Now, now Vyavaharyam, etc., I reject everything which is in the duality, Dvaita, then realize that is your own self, Saatma. So, Vigyayaha, that has to be realized, that is realizable. Brahma Satyam. What is the absolute Asat? Absolutely unreal, which is only a mere concept. Vedanta uses. There are several beautiful example, examples. Vandhya Putra. <laughs> Vandhya is a person, is a lady uh, who is incapable of bearing children. A barren woman, as we call it in English. Suppose you say this Vandhya, this barren woman, his putra, what does it mean? It means nothing. Putra is an independent concept which we know. Barren woman, Vandhya, we know, but these can't be put together. Vandhya putra is a mere concept which has no real existence in this world. Akasha kusuma. <laughs> the flowers in the sky. Sky cannot have flowers. <laughs> it's only a concept. So these are called absolute asat. It's just a word which exists without any content. Contentless, simple phrases without meaning. So this is called absolute asat. Absolutely unreal. So is the world like this? No. The world is not absolutely unreal. We see, we talk, we, I am talking to you and listening to me. So the world can't be absolutely unreal. Vyavahara goes on. 
transaction goes on. We eat and drink and talk and discuss, move around, enjoy, suffer. So all that is happening in life in this world, prapancha, dvaita prapancha, the dual world, duality. You can't say it is unreal. <laughs> but is absolutely real? No. It is not absolutely real, nor is it absolutely unreal. It is not absolute reality like Brahman. It is not absolute unreality like Vandhyaputra or Akasha Kusuma, Kapushpa. So that which is not absolutely real, nor is it absolutely unreal, has to be described by one technical term. That technical term was picked up as Mithya. Unfortunately, the Mithya has been so much misused and misunderstood. And Shankara has been accused of saying Jagan Mithya I means the world is unreal. He is not saying that. <laughs> he says the world is real as far as it goes, but don't take it to be absolutely real like Brahman. If you are satisfied by the world, as it exists and enjoy and move around and talk and discuss and socialize, please go ahead. You are fully free to do this, but a time will come when you, when you wake up and ask, is this all real? The experiences which we have, the talks which we have, the eating and drinking and society nonsense as Swami Vivekananda strongly condemns it, all this happening in this world, if you are satisfied, please go ahead. A time will come when you get blows after blows. Nature gives you blows, nature gives you sorrow, you wake up. And an intelligent person, a viveki, a discerning person, wakes up before the shock treatment by nature begins. Nature will give you shocks to wake you up. So what do you do? You see others. You see how people are suffering in this world and realize, oh, I am also going to suffer in the same way. Be careful. Come on, wake up. So the whole of spiritual life is to awaken to our real higher nature, which is Brahman, Absolute Sat. All the talk, spirituality, in the, which is being preached by these great incarnations of God, be it Krishna, Jesus or Buddha or Ramakrishna is only to awaken you to your real nature, which is the nature of absolute consciousness or Brahman. Don't reject the world as absolutely unreal, nor cling to it as absolutely real. So instead of Brahma, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya, Sri Ramakrishna replaced by a paradigm. Satya and Mithya is what is mentioned there. He said Nitya and Leela. Brahma Nityam Jagan Leela. Jagat is the Leela of Brahman. <laughs> Leela is not absolutely unreal, but it is the play of Brahman. The waves that are playing in the ocean are they unreal? I can't say they're unreal because I see them, I photograph them. I went to the beach and they stood before the waves and swam across the waves. Somebody videoed me. I got a video picture of me moving through the waves. So you can't say the wave is unreal. But can you bring a wave, carry it? No, you can carry water. So what is a wave? Wave's real nature is water manifesting in the name and form of a wave. In exactly the same way, the whole thing is only Brahman. In manifestation, it appears with the name and form as the Jagat. But if your focus is on Brahman and not on this world, your vision will get transformed, tinged with the knowledge of Brahman, and you will see the whole world itself is transformed as Brahman. This is what Swami Turiyanandaji said at the end of his life, Brahma Satyam, Jagat Satyam. 
does it go against Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya? No. Jagat Satyam, not as Jagat, as a substratum which is Brahman. The wave is real. It is unreal because it is name and form will vanish. But it is real because it is of the nature of water. As water of the ocean, the wave is real. But not as name and form of a wave, it is unreal. It's a curious mixture of reality and unreality, existence and non-existence, which is called maya or mithya. <laughs> Highly misunderstood words, maya and mithya and so on. Sri Ramakrishna comes to clarify on the basis of his realization. On the basis of realization, he asserts that the Jagat which you see is only the manifestation of Brahman. It is the Leela of Brahman. This Leela which is the play is also called Shakti, Chit Shakti. Chit is consciousness and Chit can play as a Shakti also. Chit Shakti Swarupa. Shankara mentions this in many of his commentaries. Chit Shakti. This is called Jagadamba, this is called Kali, this is called Brahma Shakti and so on. So, Sri Ramakrishna asserts, therefore, Brahma Shakti Abhed. Brahman, the supreme pure consciousness, Shakti, the power of Brahman, are non-different. He gives the example like fire and the burning property of fire, like milk and the whiteness of milk, like the snake and the wriggling motion of snake. You can't separate one from the other. When you think of the snake, you have to think of the wriggling motion. When you think of the milk, you have to think of the whiteness of milk. When you think of fire, you have to think of the burning property of fire. So the Shakti of Brahman and Brahman are identical. Shankara also makes exactly the same statement in one of the Bhashyas in the Gita. The last verse of the 14th chapter, Chatuddhashodhyaya, Brahmano hi pratishtaham mamrtasya vyasya cha shashvatasya cha sarvasya sukhasya gandhikasya cha Brahmano hi pratishtha aham. Very enigmatic verse. Here, Sri Krishna is talking as Ishvara. Ishvara says, I am the support of Brahman, pratishtha. How can it be? Ishvara has a name and form, is Saguna Brahman. How can Saguna Brahman be the support of Nirguna Brahman? <laughs> Shankara has a difficulty here in, in interpreting this verse. He says one interpretation could be here aham means the nirvikalpa, the nirguna, that which is without modifications, without qualities. And Brahma could mean the savikalpa. So the nirguna Nirvikalpa is a support of, of Savikalpa and Saguna. But this looks uh, uh, somewhat unacceptable because Aham, Sri Krishna talking, how can that be interpreted as Nirvikalpa and Nirguna? <laughs> because just the previous verse Shankara interpreted Aham as Saguna. He tentatively says this could be and another powerful extraordinarily illuminating interpretation he gives in this Bhashya. He interprets Pratishtha as a Pratitishthate or Pratishthate in the sense of Pravartana. This is the beauty of Sanskrit language. Prapurvak sthadatu can also mean Prasthana beginning. Pravartana. <clears throat> in uh, launching upon 
बिगिनिंग एन एंटरप्राइज ब्रह्मणो हि प्रतिष्ठा अहम ब्रह्मण ऑफ ब्रह्मन षष्टी एक वचन प्रतिष्ठा ब्रह्मन इज बिगिनिंग एन एक्टिविटी बिगिनिंग एन एंटरप्राइज बिगिनिंग ए बिजनेस वॉट इज द बिजनेस ऑफ ब्रह्मन to liberate mankind to liberate all beings and awaken their consciousness so brahman when it comes to ishvara is an incarnation of god as a manifestation of the divine as an avatar his one business one enterprise is to liberate people and to bless them grace them anugraha so shankara says brahmana pratishtha means brahman beginning its enterprise for anugraha blessing through what through shakti <laughs> brahman himself cannot do it because nishkriya shanta its actionless it is absolutely tranquil it can't move it is transcendental so he is shakti does it so shankara's bhashya on this verse yaya brahma shaktiya bhaktanugrahaadi prayojanaya brahma pratishthate pravartate सा शक्ति ब्रह्म एव अहम शक्ति शक्ति मतो अनन्यत्वात थिंक ऑफ द सेंटेंस दैट शक्ति दैट पावर ऑफ ब्रह्मन बाय व्हिच द सुप्रीम ब्रह्मन एंगेजेस इन द एक्ट ऑफ ब्लेसिंग the devotees and elevating their consciousness awakening the supreme spirit that shakti is me i the supreme brahman because shakti and shaktiman power and the possessor of power are identical Ananyatva, they can't be two different entities. Exactly as it were, a Sanskrit translation of Sri Ramakrishna's statement, Brahma Shakti Abhay. Tell me, where is the difference between Shankara and Swamiji and Thakur, Sri Ramakrishna? We unnecessarily, with little understanding, and imagining that we are real scholars, Panditam Manyamana. there is shankara statement in dvarshyas imagining ourselves to be great scholars we say shankara did not understand and shram krishna and swami ji alone propounded this great doctrine of vigyana no shankara knew he himself was a vigyani he was remaining in a bhava mukha this is the statement by ram krishna himself shankara acharya vidya rami rekhe chilen लोक कल्याण जन्म दिस इज अटेटमेंट द गॉस्पल शंकराचार्य खेप्ट द ईगो ऑफ नॉलेज दैट मींस द रिफाइंड ईगो व्हिच इज एक्चुअली नॉन ईगो फॉर द सेक ऑफ ग्रेसिंग द वर्ल्ड दैट इज द पाकामी द राइप आई विद्यारमी द ईगो ऑफ नॉलेज भक्ति रमी द ईगो ऑफ डिवोटी these are the shakti of brahman and shakti shakti man are identical this realization is a state of vigyana the state of vigyana is the realization of the non difference and identity of shakti and shakti man as a brahman you remain transcendental beyond space beyond time beyond causation beyond form beyond name beyond duality as shakti you are in the realm of the name and form 
you play in this world and that shakti's play is not mithya but it is leela <laughs> so as tapasyanji beautifully used to say the paradigm of satya and mithya in brahma satyam jagan mithya has been replaced by sri ramakrishna in the paradigm of nitya and leela <laughs> Brahman is the nitya, absolute, and the jagat is leela, which is the play of the shakti of Brahman. So this realization of the vijnana comes to a person when he is poised in bhava mukha. So this is what Sri Ramakrishna is explaining to Vidya Sagar in the statement, which we will take up. Om niranjanam nitya mananta rupam bhaktanu kampathuta vigraham vai. ईशावतारम परमेशमिद्यम तम रामकृष्णम शिरसा नमः ओम शांति 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 हे हरि हि ओम तत्सत श्री रामकृष्णार्पणमस्तु